noches. Hola. Mis hermosos amigos y hermosas hermanas. ¿Cómo estás? Bien. Lo siento, yo presenté en inglés. I have just used most of my Spanish that I remember. <laughs> Gavin, Gavin. They all speak English pretty well. They all So in my volunteer life, completely unpaid, uh, a board member of International Pronouns Day, uh, which is an effort to celebrate all gender identities and promote education around pronouns. I'm also a volunteer for the Tree Award, uh, which is an award in science fiction and fantasy for speculative literature that explores concepts of gender. Um, and I am the former co-chair of the World Science Fiction Convention when it was hosted by Elsie Finland in 2017. Oh, <laughs> what? My name is What is pronouns <laughs> Pronouns day. Uh, so my pronouns in English are she, her, or they, them. Ah, okay. uh, someone else's pronouns in English might be he, him. No pronouns. Uh, this is a different conversation in Spanish because your language is uh, inherently gender. <laughs> and, uh, but I have talked to some people about some of the changes happening here too. But, so that is some about me. This is a picture from your meetup site. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I would like to hear something about you. So I know that we are a large group of people, but can I have everyone give me your Project that you are working on. Starting here. Sure. Uh, my name is Camilo, Camilo Vera, but uh, everyone can call me Camo, please. Uh, <laughs> I'm working right now in an e learning e learning platform for medium medium and small and medium sized companies to help them improve their businesses, acquiring like a, a business skills, I guess. I don't know how to say it actually in Spanish, but in English. Well, I'm Miguel, and I'm working in Photoshop, that is a grocery delivery service. Yeah. I'm Johnny, uh, <laughs> I work in a community. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, Magno, Hackemer, I don't have. Uh, I also do mobile, 
but we will like to grab it from the same one. Hi, I'm Ivan. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm a developer. I'm working on a medical app at the moment. I'm working on a medical app and this is fun. So, just copy. Uh, I'm Kevin. I am an iOS developer technique with Samba. I work with these guys at uh, MDC Lab. I'm Charles. And uh, projects that you're working on, something mm -hmm. in progress. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Manuel. I'm working in CIT with this guy. I am the web. <coughs> Hi, my name is Alberto. I'm a platform developer. I'm working on the development of the software. My name is Claudio. I'm working with Lato U. I am Yanaris. I love to develop game, game development, but I'm working in a bank. I'm Felipe, I'm an EX developer. I'm working on doing apps for Soviet people. I'm Jose Luis Canepa. Uh, I'm working with Camilo in Torino also. I'm the Node.js no developer. I used to do iOS. So, <laughs> here. so look at, uh, sorry, iOS. Yeah. Don't look at me. <laughs> okay, okay. Hi, I'm, I'm Mauricio. I'm working on Node.js. I'm working on Node.js for the healthcare industry in the US. And uh, after, after hours, I'm working on uh, in the energy sector. Um, basically, both building up. Data warehouse. So, no. cool. I am Francisco. Uh, I am doing this background a little bit. And I work with you as a family in high unit. Okay. I'm Miguel. I'm mobile developer. <laughs> Working in high unit. Okay. Uh, this one. That is for intent. Uh, and uh, to be a mobile developer for the uh, uh, and that kind of Hi, I'm Juan. I'm working in the car. <laughs> Thank you for listening. <laughs>
I'm Joel. I'm what do you know? Right now I'm studying social media. I am Sam, member of the Leader of the In my heart, I was a developer. Actually, it's been several months since the last time I was a developer. And with the team, we are working on Google for search and apps for real estate. Hi, I am Nice to meet you. Hello, everybody. My name is Kosaki. Born in the Sorry, Sorry, TV. And I'm a developer here in the Tower Limit, the e commerce, largest e commerce company in Latin America. And I'm part of a team where we build these uh, services so people could find, hire, and buy any service. Some of you have met each other, some of you have been to all of these meetups, and some of you have been to some of them, maybe. Uh, so one of the things that I want to talk with you about in terms of imposter syndrome is that anyone can feel it, and one of the things that helps people feeling imposter syndrome is having a community that can support you and appreciate you. Uh, this is a quote by Maya Angelou. Uh, do you know who Maya Angelou is? Okay. Maya Angelou was a poet in the U.S. who won many awards and was invited to write a poem for President Clinton's inauguration. Uh, she was, over the course of her life, also uh, a scriptwriter, an actress, a dancer, a uh, journalist, um, and at one point a sex worker. Uh, she had many different roles in her life um, before she became an author and poet. And this quote is toward the end of her life. Unfortunately, she died a few years ago. Um, but she's still at the end of her life, having received all of these awards and all of these moments of success, still felt imposter syndrome. Can I have someone translate this into Spanish? Bueno, sí, sí, he escrito un de libros, pero tal vez pienso que, oh, oh, oh no, van a van a van a descubrir. Se cuenta, van a engañar a todos y van a descubrirme. <laughs> uh, so imposter syndrome is this feeling of not being able to recognize your own successes. Uh, perhaps uh, you have been hired for a job, um, but you don't believe it. You don't believe that you should have been hired. Maybe someone else should have been hired instead. Has anyone felt that way? No. <laughs> <laughs> only point for yourself. <laughs> Self-reporting only. <laughs> yes. So it is a very difficult feeling, in particular if you are starting out in a new opportunity or a new position. 
transition uh, or on a new project or trying to learn a new skill. Like maybe you're trying to learn Swift and in the past you've only programmed in Python or in C++. Like it is difficult to struggle with these feelings um, and you might feel like an imposter or a fake. Um, as you build skills, you might not recognize that you have learned some things. Uh, and you might still feel, oh, I'm just the person who started in this position. I don't know why they kept me. You know? um, which can be a big struggle. Uh, imposter syndrome uh, is a term that was invented in 1978 uh, by Dr. Suzanne Inez and Dr. Pauline Pants. Um, and Dr. Pants wrote a book about it after that um, called The Imposter Phenomenon. Um, and there are many things in that book that are still useful. I read it last year. Um, and if you are interested, I encourage you to seek it out. Um, but the idea <coughs> is to understand that anyone can struggle with these feelings. Um, <coughs> have you heard of Neil Gaiman? Uh, the Sandman comics, or um, uh, what was the American Gods, uh, Good Omens, he wrote those. Um, can I have a translation of this quote? Unos años atrás, tuve la suerte de ser invitado a una junta de grandes personas y muy buenas y científicos, escritores y descubridores de cosas. Y me sentí que en cualquier momento se daría en cuenta que yo no estaba a su altura. Uh, eh, entre esas personas que realmente habían hecho algo. Mm -hmm. So, one of the amazing things about this quote is that this is the beginning of the story of Neil Gaiman meeting Neil Armstrong, the astronaut, <laughs> and talking to Neil Armstrong, the astronaut, who said, I don't know why I'm here. <laughs> I'm surrounded by these people who do things. I just went somewhere I was told to go. <laughs> uh, it, it was very humbling for a young man to realize that this person who he idolized, who he thought so much of, had also felt imposter syndrome. So, where does imposter syndrome come from? Uh, why do we get these feelings, get these uh, impressions that we don't belong or that we <coughs> uh, are not really successful or shouldn't be in the position that we are in? Um, one explanation is something called stereotype threat. Um, this is from psychological studies from Dr. Paul Steele and Dr. Joshua Aronson. Um, they studied putting people in a situation where they might worry about confirming a stereotype about themselves. Uh, so, for example, uh, they had a math test um, and they presented the math test to uh, two groups of people. And for one group, they said, here's the math test, and then they spoke. And for the other group, they said, here's the math test. We know that there is a stereotype about women not being good at math, but don't worry, we have addressed that problem in this math test. And if you are worried about the stereotype you shouldn't be, uh, it will be okay. Um, and they found that the women taking the second math test did better because they were not so worried about feeling like imposters or feeling like they couldn't do math. Um, I don't know if this is a, a stereotype that you have in Chilean culture, but it's a very strong stereotype in American culture. Um, is it also prevalent here? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I guess. And do you recognize this uh, comic? Yeah. 
Yeah, it's Casey. Yeah. So, uh, Randy is a friend of a friend and worked in my office for many years. And if you ask me later, I will show you some of the comics that we drew on the whiteboard together. Um, which did not make it to the website, but it was really fun. Um, so, the point, um, this is a stereotype in American culture, and it sounds like there's some of it in Chilean culture. Um, how, do we, how do we address these uh, stereotypes that might make someone feel imposter syndrome, right? Like it's, everything is related. Um, so this can be related to imposter syndrome for women working in science or working as programmers. Um, so, uh, there's also the aspect of imposter syndrome that, again, this is an American cultural reference, but I suspect you also have some of this in Chilean culture of faking until you make it. <laughs> so, what happens when you have faked it? for so long, you reach the end of the project and you feel like a fraud, right? Because you've told yourself all along, I just need to fake it long enough to get through this. And at the end, of the, you look back and you're like, well, I didn't really do that. Potentially, some of the feelings going on there. Um, what about when you are trying something new, like you are trying to learn your programming language, you are trying to give a talk uh, for the first time, maybe you are trying to speak new language uh, that you haven't spoken to since seventh grade. <laughs> um, what, what happens in these, in these situations? Um, someone might feel imposter syndrome. Uh, can anyone think of another situation where this might Relationships. Can you say a little more about that? What? Can you uh, say a little bit more? Add to that. For example, idea. It's, it's typical that we, when we met a person, we try to learn to do the best of things that we got. So after we try, uh, the person will discover the knowledge, like the size of the character or the person. Mm -hmm. So they are like disappointed. Like, they are able to learn. Disappointed. Well, and you're also, um, at some point, you started a relationship for the first time, and did you know what you were doing immediately? No, you, you watched other people and thought, well, I guess this is how you're supposed to do it, and what you're supposed to say, and I guess this is what my identity is now, I'm in this relationship, and then you tried to figure out if it really fit, right? If it was who you were. Um, very, very related concept. Can anyone think of another example? Maybe support. Say again? Support? Support. No, support. 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 Yes. yes. Okay. Um, so, building a support skill, and there's, a, there's often a process of trying out for a team, if it's a team sport, or building your own skills if it's a, if it's a solo sport. Um, and initially, you don't know what you're doing, and you just sort of fake it. Um, and then maybe at some point, somebody says, oh, you're really good at this. And you're like, well, I'm not really good at this. I just started, or I don't know what I'm doing. Absolutely. Well, I remember, uh, no one, the uh, university degree. It's typical when you got the, the paper, and you're a programmer. And you are working. What should I do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. A piece of paper says that I should be able to do this thing, but I don't actually know what I'm doing. Yeah, exactly. So, I just did that. Good job. Um, what can we do about this? What can we do about these feelings of imposter syndrome, particularly uh, in a culture where in tech, which everyone in this room appears to be in tech, 
uh, it is not a very forgiving culture if you expose some feelings. <laughs> At least in American tech and British tech and European tech uh, experiences I have had, um, not necessarily forgiving if you make a mistake in public. Um, not necessarily understanding if you have emotions. Uh, I once gave a talk to 700 people in London at a, at a conference, and within the first minute of my talk, my screensaver came on, and I could not get it, like I could not get my password correct. Uh, it took me five tries. <laughs> There's <a> video. <laughs> um, what do we do in these situations um, where we are struggling with feeling like a fraud, where we are setting out on a new project and we aren't confident that we can do it? Um, what are some of the things that you do? To study. 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 Look to experts. Mm -hmm. yeah. Find a mentor, perhaps, to ask questions. Um, do you also potentially ask a friend? Yep. Um, or do you perhaps uh, remind yourself of other successes that you have had, mm -hmm. even if it's not the project that you're working on at the moment? Uh, I keep a list of talks that I have given and of uh, talks that have been rejected from conferences. And every time I have given a talk, uh, well, every time I have had a talk accepted and then I give it, I give myself a special treat, you know, to encourage myself and something to remind me that this happened. Um, I, I also, have discovered that keeping a reminder of other parts of my life and being a whole person, uh, I feel like I should be able to say that in Spanish, but I don't know how. Um, but bringing my, my whole self to a situation, the part of me that is a science fiction editor, even though I'm here talking to you about technology and imposter syndrome, the part of me that is, you know, a person who lives in Boston, but bringing my whole self to a situation, um, having reminders of other parts of my life that are successful and going well, helps me when I am facing a hard situation. Uh, when I was putting together the slides for this talk, I did not know how long it would help. <laughs> and that was a little bit nervous for me. Um, and so I went and sent a message to my husband, and he sent me a bunch of pictures of my garden. Because that is a project that is going very well right now. I am having the best tomatoes. <laughs> um, having a reminder of something that is going well in another aspect of your life can really help you through something that is hard, like struggling with these feelings you are struggling and feeling like you can't be successful, remind yourself of another area where you are being successful. Uh, this is a diagram that I use to remind myself of how I can impact my own imposter syndrome. And I encourage you to think of this diagram when you are feeling you cannot solve all the problems of the world or all of the reasons why you might feel difficulty with success. Um, but your thoughts and your feelings and your actions are all related. And so if you can change what you are thinking, it might alter how you are feeling. And then it can alter what you see as options for how you can act in a situation. Does that make sense? Um, one of the difficult things in talking about imposter syndrome in tech or in the world in general 
and I'm working with a friend to start a research study on imposter syndrome. So I have some standing from which to say this. One of the difficult things is that some of the messages that tell people that we can't be successful or that we don't really deserve the successes that we have or that we you know, shouldn't have been hired for this job or shouldn't have been chosen by this person for a relationship or shouldn't have been picked for this sports team. Some of those messages come from places we cannot control. You know, society at large gives people ideas of stereotypes. You know, and, and I personally, and you personally, and you personally cannot change things like sexism, and racism, and homophobia, and transphobia, and these things that send people messages that they don't belong. But what we can do is we can think about our internal processes. And what we can do is think about what we are working on and try to change our thoughts and feelings so that it gives us different options for actions. That is my very short talk. <laughs>